orcs. One of the main staples of fantasy and Dungeons and Dragons since its inception. And there can be little doubt that if you've ever played a game of D&D, you've probably come across this evil and fearsome race before. But are orcs stale? Have we overused them in our games to the point that they're just not exciting anymore? How can we make them more interesting? That's what we're going to talk about today. So, I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started. Welcome adventurers, what's going on guys? My name is Cody, this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role-playing games. So let's talk about orcs. Specifically for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, though let's not kid ourselves, if you're playing any type of fantasy game, you probably have orcs in your game. Orcs are one of my absolute favorite monsters to use as a dungeon master or game master because they're just incredibly versatile. But before we jump in and talk about how to use orcs in our games, let's talk a little bit about orcs in 5th edition and specifically in the default setting of the Forgotten Realms. So here are some interesting things about orcs that we should know first. First off, they're young. Orcs typically only live to be about 50 years old or so. So when you put this in perspective, it kind of starts to explain why some races like dwarves and elves might not really view orcs as all that human. And it can explain a lot about how underdeveloped of a race they are if you subscribe to the 10,000 hours theory, then it starts to make a little sense that the only way of life that an orc knows is that of the pillager. They probably don't have very many artisans among their ranks. They are surprisingly religious. Unlike other races like humans who chase their own goals and motivations, what orcs know is grumpsh. So when the gods got together, right, to dish out all of the land, Grumpsh wanted the mountains, only to find out that dwarves had already claimed them. Then he wanted the forests, but alas, elves had already claimed them, and so on and so forth, until there was really nothing left for Grumpsh and the orcs. The other deities start to make fun of him, and as you can imagine, he's pretty much like, fine, I'll just burn everything you have to the ground. If I can't have it, you can't have it. And as such, orcs in general derive their power from Grumpsh by proving themselves and obtaining his blessings. Orcs lose control around elves. So the short version is that Grumpsh lost an eye to Corellin Lorethian, and as such, faithful orcs often go berserk whenever they encounter an elf. So much so that even if they were on a raid, it might be acceptable to return to the encampment empty-handed of goods as long as they had plenty of elf ears. Orc hordes and warbands do not typically eradicate everything in their path. This is something for us to take note of because it might play against the tropes that we have in our heads that orcs kill absolutely everything if given the chance. But orcs understand that they are better served by plundering and returning to plunder again than by wiping out a village completely just for the sport of it. Orcs are not as dumb as you think they are. So when we look at the stat block for orcs, we see that they have a typical intelligence score of seven, which is not great, but certainly doesn't mean that they are blundering idiots as we often like to kind of assume. But looking at the other stat blocks we've been given between the monster manual and Volo's guide to monsters, we see that war chiefs have an intelligence of 11. Aurogs get a 12, Eye of Grumsh a 9, Hand of Yurtis an 11, Luthic a 10. These are really solid numbers for NPCs, and often even better than some PCs. So they're more than capable of deception, negotiation, and creating clever traps and ambushes. And of course, orcs are led by the most fearsome and capable of its warriors, much akin to how the human barbarian tribes work. If you've ever read any of the Forgotten Realms books, this is very much how R.A. Salvatore depicts the barbarian tribes of the Icewind Dale and just south of the spine of the world. But there are also other works for you to draw on if you want to change up how orcs work in your world and in your setting. The two most popular of which are probably Elder Scrolls and uh, World of Warcraft. So in both of these, orcs are more than just purely evil. 
but they still share a lot of in common with traditional Dungeons and Dragons orcs in that they are very tradition oriented. I also love the imagery of the orc shaman or the orc druid with magical ties to nature or the gods. And I think that if you're going to do a bit of world building, then orcs are a great place to start if you want to define your world for your players. They are one of the most prevalent races in fantasy and your players are definitely going to have some preformed opinions about them. So if you decide to go with something more akin to Skyrim where orcs are just another race, albeit maybe a more militaristic one or perhaps one that's even tolerated but looked down on, that's definitely something that you should mention to your players early to help them understand really the type of world that they're in. Okay, so now the fun part. Let's talk about how to use orcs in more interesting ways than just throwing them at your player like an MMO of go kill 23 orcs, defeat the chief, return to quest giver for experience and loot. But before we talk about that, I wanna give a huge thank you to my sponsor for this video, Miniature Market. Guys, I, I love Miniature Market because their selection is huge and the prices are incredible. Christmas is here, so if you're thinking about snagging some board games for your significant other or even yourself, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You're gonna be visiting family and need something to do. Miniature Market has got you covered, okay? Dice, minis, singles, D&D &D books, play mats, hard to find DM screens. These guys have it all at incredible prices. So go check out Miniature Market and thank me later. Okay, so let's talk about using orcs in more interesting ways. One of the first things that I would recommend is to not be afraid to make them centric to the story. Oftentimes, orcs are used at lower levels because they're meaty monsters that players will feel good about beating up. And that's fine, but a lot of times that's all the players get is an encounter or two of orcs as really just a way to get them to the next level. But what happens if we really push them to the forefront for a low to mid-level game story arc? Now, we might just have enough room to develop a good villain. One thing that should make orcs more terrifying for your PCs and the world around them is orcs in numbers, serious numbers. If you have your players come across a small scouting party of five to six orcs, they probably won't think much about it. It's just another night of Dungeons and Dragons. And the players might even feel safe in a small city from an orc raid. But what happens when you start to gather serious numbers? Would a village feel safe if there was a warband of 200 orc warriors supported by a handful of magic users and a clever and tested orc war chief nearby? And you can even go larger than that for your mid-level games. Would a group of level 10 players feel threatened by an orc encampment of 800? And you don't have to go full Helm's Deep 10,000 orcs marching on the city to imply that orcs should be taken as a serious threat. Another interesting way that you can use orcs in large numbers is to challenge your players to keep peace with them instead of just purely trying to dispose of them. We could go the bug's life route here and have the nearby village pay them a tribute in order to keep the horde at bay. But introduce a little chaos into the fold of another villain stealing the tribute and now you have a complex situation for your players that they can't simply swing their ax at. What would the orcs demand if their tribute had been stolen? What happens if the tribute was stolen after it had been given to them? Did the secondary villain destroy the tribute? Did the villain take the tribute for personal gain? Or to create conflict between the orcs and the nearby village. But if players find themselves vastly outnumbered by orcs, this is a great way to start opening up your campaign to new solutions rather than just kill the threat, profit. And another thing I'll add here is don't be afraid to make it personal. Having your player's village and all of their family and loved ones under threat is a great way to get your players invested and not be dismissive of the fact that you're just putting them up against orcs. I also love to use orcs as a moral dilemma for players. In my opinion, no monster in Dungeons and Dragons better personifies moral quandary when encountered than orcs. One of my absolute favorite memories of playing D&D is when I had my players hunting down an old stronghold for an ancient order of knights. 
the nearby town said there were reports of orcs out on the road and that people were going missing. So naturally, my players assumed they would be killing some orcs before the night was through. But when they finally discovered the ruins, they found a cult of cannibals had moved into the stronghold and that they were the ones responsible for all of the disappearances. After making their way to the cellar, my players discover a butcher's table that had been set up to cut up the cult's meals. And in a pair of cages in the corner, there was a small teenage girl and a young orc that had been brutalized by the cultists. As you can imagine, the players had quite the dilemma on their hands with what to do. Eventually, they decided to free the orc and help him, but all the while having their blades drawn on him. And not long after the group left, they encountered two dozen orcs out looking for their missing tribesmen. It was a very intense moment as my players were forced to keep a cool head while the orcs looked over their beaten brother who just so happened to have a rogue's dagger pointed at his back. This is a great way to use orcs beyond their challenge rating. And you can do something very similar with putting players up against a question of morality when they encounter orcs. How would your players react if they came across an orc fleeing from a hunt put on by their tribe as a form of a death sentence? Do they wanna stop and get tangled up with an orc tribe if they're in the middle of traveling for another quest? Or what if they encounter a pair of orcs out looking for their tribe that had mysteriously disappeared? What I like about both of these hooks is that you can still use orcs in their traditionally intended sense of chaotic evil and you can humanize them at the same time. I also like that both of these imply that the world is alive in the sense that humans in a village aren't the only ones trying to survive. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about my favorite, favorite orc, or at least half orc, the Tanaruk. So the Tanaruk is a demon abomination that is given to the tribe as a blessing from Baphomet. Coming in at a CR5, I think that this is a perfect boss for low level campaigns. Though Tanaruks are typically kept caged, just because of how brutal and dangerous to the tribe they are, they can and will take over a tribe if given the chance. And this makes them a perfect boss in an orc campaign. They're tough, vicious, and having one find its way to leading a tribe through domination and fear is a great catalyst to create a new conflict in your world. This is great for that setup of Orc raids have always been a problem in the area, but now they've gone and massacred the entire town of Yeston type of campaign hook. So let's look at how we can put a bit of a twist on orcs. One of the ways that I like to mix things up to freshen a monster up for my players is to just pair them off with something maybe a little bit unusual. In this case, because of the orc theming, I think the obvious choice is to give them some form of a beast for them to like master. Three jump to mind immediately the Onkeg, the Hippogriff, and the Giant Centipede. All three of these creatures have really great imagery when paired with the orc. The Onkeg is already one of my favorite monsters, and they're just the right size to give an orc a far more imposing stature and threatening appearance for your group. You could do a lot here with acid and even give your orcs acid tip javelins and give their shamans a bit of an acid flavored spell list. Hippogriffs are a great choice to mix things up if suddenly your players are being hunted down by an orc tribe that can fly. This could also be a really nice twist for an Aracocra story arc. And giant centipedes I like just for the raw imagery. Frankly, I just think it's a really, really cool concept and something that will probably stand out to your players for a while versus giving orcs more dire wolves to ride. Not to mention they can be great if your players are traveling over the mountains or are in the middle of a mountain dwarf type campaign. And another small twist idea for you guys is to change up their motivations. Leaning back on the Tanaruk, you could easily start to incorporate more demons into the campaign. This could really create a smooth transition from one story arc into the next. You could spend the first five levels of a campaign dealing with the orcs, ending with a showdown with the Tanaruk. All the while, the Tanaruk had been working to unleash more demons into the world. It's a simple trick from Supernatural, which is a great show, by the way that can pull your group into an entire new arc really, really seamlessly. 
And if you wanna do something like this, try to hold your cards really close to the chest and slowly drop hints to your players that the orcs are acting outside of their normal pillage and plunder behavior. And finally, let's talk a bit about tactics here. So one thing that I really dislike is just seeing orcs rush in, filled with rage, and eventually be overcome by players. Just because generic orcs have an intelligence of seven doesn't mean that they all have to be mindless fodder. It certainly makes sense that an Arog or an Orc war chief would be able to instruct them on how to properly engage enemies. So make use of an Orc's javelin, and don't be afraid to set up an ambush on your players. Players get really comfortable with overcoming threats that they've seen a few times. Our job is to challenge them and push them out of that comfort zone. A roadside ambush where the orcs have laid a trap to bait the group into position can be tough for your players to overcome, but still totally fair. Having your orcs hit and run can really create a tough situation for your players, especially if your players survive but over pursue. If we're talking about ways to kill your party with orcs, this is a devastating strategy. Players want their loot and experience, and players with an aggressive style of play could very well find themselves rolling up a new character if they just charge through unfamiliar woods blindly after a small, appropriately balanced scuffle on the road. Also, don't be afraid to mix up your horde. Throw in a pair of CR one half nurtured ones of Yurtis that wait around before charging in over the hill to explode near the group for 4d6 poison damage. And when a small band of red fangs of Shargus cast darkness on the group, something that doesn't impede their own vision, your group will be scrambling to defend themselves. And these special orcs can easily be mixed into your encounters and into a story arc with orcs as the main theme. Mix them in often and keep your players guessing. If your wizard is unsure if they should prepare dispel magic or fireball, knowing ahead of time that they're gonna be facing a band of orcs, that means that you're doing a good job of keeping your orcs fresh. So now I'll pass it over to you, the community. What are some of the ways that you guys like to use orcs? How can we mix things up and keep them fresh? And what kinds of plot hooks do you guys think would make for a good campaign arc centered around orcs? The comments this week should be an incredible source of adventure ideas. I seriously cannot wait to read them. Also, let me know what you guys think of this video and if you'd like to see more videos on monsters. I'd love to get some feedback if I should go ahead and make this into a series. Let me know. I wanna thank all of my kick-ass patrons for helping me make this video possible. Your support is helping me chase this dream of doing what I love to do. Thank you so very much. And if this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I'll be putting out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.